Denmark, Novo Nordisk, AB Link. We are launching our once weekly GLP-1 Ozempic in the US market. We also have a big uh, obese business. We'll continuously roll out our innovative portfolio of GLP-1s. Last week, here's a two-week chart of the S&P, but uh, 2,500 would be an important sport level. And sales surge at Novo Nordisk. The CEO says the firm is seeing a gradual recovery in patients initiating diabetes treatment. They also have a recently approved drug for weight loss with really extreme results. So How does we Govi help you lose weight? We have a very uh, efficacious product uh, now on the market in the US, uh, we Govi. Novo is the only company with FDA approval to market will go with the fact that that chart's about the greatest chart you've ever seen. And that's all about one drug mostly, David. It's a drug called we go with. A new blockbuster obesity drug, we go with. Novo Nordisk, Ozempic, and we go with. Here's a Novo Nordisk are up sharply this morning. So it's a weight loss drug, we go with. Novo Nordisk. Here's a headline. Dethroning LVMH is Europe's most valuable company. Thanks to Well, here it is, Saturday morning. It's the day that I give myself my Ozempic injection. This is my box of Ozempic. This is 65-year-old Mary Tripp. She's struggled with her weight since she was 11 years old. I did have times in my life where, um, you know, it was hard for me to get out and take a walk or get out and do anything. I mean, it was... I, you know, and, and at those times, yes, I mean, I felt like a failure. While a gastric bypass operation in 2005 reversed her type 2 diabetes, the weight wouldn't stay off until summer 2022 when her doctor recommended she try Ozempic. We tried different um, diabetes drugs that, you know, that also help you lose weight, but there was a, several of the older ones that I was allergic to. so. Then it had been a number of years, and, and you know, I was kind of saying to her, like, is there anything else we can do? And she said, why don't we try Ozempic and see how that goes? Her diabetes made her a prime candidate for the drug. She's lost about 60 pounds since June 2022. Results like Mary's are part of why there's a global surge in demand for semaglutide, sold under the name Ozempic for patients with diabetes, and Wegovi for those seeking weight loss. In 2021, national spending for semaglutide totaled $10.7 billion. Danish pharmaceutical company Novo Nordisk developed it, transforming an untapped industry and likely the company's fortunes forever. This is going to be one of the biggest, the highest demand drugs in the history of pharmaceuticals. While diabetes drugs have been effective for decades, drugs for weight loss have not. And the potential impact is huge. More than 1 billion people suffer from obesity worldwide. It's been a crazy ride and it's, uh, it's still ongoing. It's clear that nobody had expected that it would be taking off this quickly. In September 2023, Hello. CNBC's Melissa Lee got an inside look at a Novo Nordisk lab in Denmark. Novo Nordisk didn't set out to create a weight loss drug. It was an unintentional side effect discovered while studying GLP-1s. We had no clue about uh, this molecule will come up with higher efficacy than our past versions of, uh, of these molecules. Semaglutide is the medical name for Ozempic and Wegovi and falls under a class of drugs called GLP-1 agonists. GLP-1 drugs mimic GLP-1 molecules in the body and regulate blood sugar, stimulate insulin production, and suppress appetite. I guess that's what I've been looking for, is something that will like tell my brain, you really don't need this and you really don't want it. We knew we had a type 2 diabetes product, but we also talked about if it actually works uh, in obesity. Do we dare to go in and, and do that development? As it often plays out in research, there's also some surprises on the way. Semaglutide was developed in the early 2000s and released in 2012 as Ozempic, a weekly injection for those with type 2 diabetes. It passed FDA approval in 2017. Wegovi was approved in 2021. Neither were an immediate hit. Weight loss drugs already in the market weren't as effective, which made it challenging when trying to promote to those disillusioned with the diet industry. Many who live with obesity have tried a lot of different things and often failed. So actually just mobilizing patients to seek care is, uh, is not easy. It was not a, a huge success, so to say. Doctors say demand took off when fear about death was spreading during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, obesity 
could triple the risk of hospitalization. That was the moment that everything shifted. I remember having patients coming to me, patients with obesity or struggling with weight, specifically saying, I don't want to die from COVID due to my weight. In 2020, more than a million U.S. patients were prescribed semaglutide. In 2021, that number jumped to about 2 million. They didn't see it coming. No one saw it come. Investors didn't, an uh, analysts didn't. This one drug alone could be worth 200, 300 billion dollars over time. Yeah, I think we were maybe six to ten people working on that project. Six to ten people yeah. in a lab like this. Uh, yeah, we were in different labs. Pal Block was one of the scientists in the early phases of semaglutide's discovery. I made uh, semaglutide the first time in uh, 2004, so it was a long process uh, before we hit the right one. But Novo Nordisk's 100-year history began with the desire to cure diabetes, as one of the company's founders had the disease. In 1922, a group of scientists traveled to Canada to bring back a new miracle drug, insulin, to Scandinavia leading to the founding of Nordisk Insulin Laboratorium. Less than three months later, they treated the first 10 patients. And they didn't have anything at all when they started. It was made in a basement. A few years later, two former Nordisk employees started their own company, Novo Therapeutisk. Novo and Nordisk competed as the world's leading insulin producers until finally merging in 1989 to become Novo Nordisk. I saw this competition on a transatlantic perspective and globally, and there were huge demands for investments in uh, development and research. In August 2023, the company became Europe's most valuable company by market cap, more valuable than its home country Denmark's total economy. Its second quarter earnings in 2023 followed suit. The company reported a 46% increase in net profit and a 32% increase in sales compared to the same quarter the year prior. Sales of Ozempic and Wegovi rose by 58% and 363% respectively in the first six months of 2023. And in the same period, the company recorded overall net sales of $15.1 billion. To put that in perspective, the year Novo Nordisk developed semaglutide in 2012, the company's full year net sales were $13.5 billion. In the past five years, the share price of Novo Nordisk has more than quadrupled. The stock sold for $89.99 as of October 5th, 2023. We haven't seen any performance um, even close to this. Just days prior to second quarter earnings in 2023, it was reported that a late stage clinical trial showed Wegovi reduced the risk of cardiovascular events like heart attacks or strokes by 20% compared to a placebo. Shares soared by 17% that day. The select trial exceeded expectations and helped the company showcase the drug's potential beyond its image as a vanity drug. The world saw that, okay, this is not just about weight. The select trial was really, you know, one of the bigger moments, I believe, in healthcare over the past few years, aside from COVID vaccines. And if these data stick over the long term, we can come up with numbers that we just have not seen for other therapeutics. The company raised its full year profit and sales forecasts for a second time. We felt comfortable all along that uh, dealing with obesity is actually leading to uh, a number of health benefits. So far, we have developed it for type 2 diabetes and obesity. We are testing it out also in Alzheimer's. One of the reasons why it works in obesity is that it deals with your craving, so your say, addiction uh, for, for food. There are some speculations that close to that center in the brain is also the control of other addictions. While the company continues to diversify its portfolio, at the moment, it is all in on obesity care. Later in August, the company acquired competitor Embark Biotech for $16.3 million up front and up to $498 million in milestone payments and drug developer Inversago Pharma for about $1 billion. More than 100 million U.S. adults are living with obesity. In its 2020 report, the Milken Institute found that the economic and social impacts of the disease in the U.S. alone account for nearly $1.4 trillion. Its estimated annual medical U.S. costs were nearly $173 billion in 2019. 
type 2 diabetes and obesity go hand in hand, so by improving one, we improve the other one, right? But if we look at it in the obesity weight loss side, we are preventing type 2 diabetes by treating obesity. Yet obesity is largely an untapped market. Prior to GLP-1s, previous weight loss drugs were either ineffective or had dangerous side effects, like the diet drug combo FenFen in the 90s that was linked to heart and lung damage. In clinical trials, Wegovy was shown to reduce body weight in people with a BMI of 27 or greater by around 15%. There's always been a barrier to break through weight loss of about 10%. That's always been the view that once you break through 10%, this becomes a, a very, very real market. And Novo achieved that, frankly, with Wegovy. While Novo Nordisk is a first mover in obesity care, the company can't solve the epidemic alone there are one billion people suffering worldwide. To be able to support all of the patients who are diagnosed or, or who would be diagnosed as obese in the US market, you'd have to be able to supply over 50 billion pens. That's a pretty daunting task just to manufacture the devices. In 2032, Novo Nordisk's semaglutide patent expires in the US. Many other pharmaceutical companies are joining the race by developing their own GLP-1 drugs like Eli Lilly, which analysts say is Novo Nordisk's biggest competitor. Amgen and Pfizer are, are also working on products there. There's a number of other companies, including um, Viking and Structure on the small cap biotech side that are buying for positioning here as well. Eli Lilly's terzepatide sold as Manjaro is more effective and boosts higher weight loss results than semaglutide. Unlike Wegovy, Manjaro is not yet FDA approved for weight loss, but expected to be in late 2023 or early 2024. I like competition because uh, if there's no competition, uh, there is a risk that we not, do not stay innovative. So we have been competing with uh, Eli Lilly for 100 years. While growth has been explosive, there are some concerns. For one, massive demand for both Ozempic and Wegovy has caused real supply shortages. The company is expanding production capacity in its North Carolina and Denmark facilities. If you look at the, just the growth of Wegovy in the U.S., it's, you know, it's more than doubling a year over year. So more and more capacity is coming in line. Off-label use is another consideration. Everybody looks so great. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? As Jimmy Kimmel joked at the 2023 Oscars, celebrities are reportedly using these drugs to lose a few extra pounds. They wouldn't be the first. A recent study by data analytics firm Trillient Health found that only a little more than half of U.S. patients on GLP-1 drugs have a history of type 2 diabetes or received a prescription after a medical visit. It's a challenging situation because uh, it's, a, it's a new situation for us. It's something we cannot control. So we are really doubling down in making sure that physicians are educated around our products. But some experts don't necessarily see off-label use as an issue and rather a challenge to solve for the future. After treatment becomes available for those who need it most, the next step is likely reaching the average consumer. That is, people who want to lose a little extra weight. Consumer products don't uh, command the same uh, profit margins that pharmaceutical products do, but in terms of being able to scale into a market this vast. But to kind of take this to the consumer, assuming that we continue to see good safety of this category over time, um, would be potentially a next leg of the story, uh, not just for Nova Nordisk, but also for the industry. If they can't innovate successfully beyond semaglutide, that's a fundamental problem for the pharmaceutical industry that they have to solve for. There are some questions about side effects. Many users have reported experiencing minor symptoms like nausea. Others, more serious, like stomach paralysis, depression, and suicidal thoughts. On October 5th, 2023, a study, the first of its kind, found an increased risk of gastrointestinal issues stemming from GLP-1 drugs. The Danish drug maker, along with Eli Lilly, was already facing a lawsuit over what plaintiffs say is a failure to disclose these types of health issues. Any uh, report of safety issue is, of course, of concern because patient safety is, is fundamental. We collect all these, uh, these data and we look at uh, all the clinical data we have. Each and every safety report 
is investigated. We feel that we have a robust data set and uh, we share that with the authorities who do investigate this, but we believe that there's no concerns besides what is already established in the label. And while those effects aren't widespread, they could derail the company's growth. You could go all the way back to 2003, 2004 with Vioxx, Celebrex, and Bextra, the COX-2 inhibitors, where those products were projected to be 15 to $20 billion market. It actually ended up, you know, sort of uh, reversing and going back to, you know, a $3 billion market. Do we think that's going to happen here? Absolutely not. For Mary, so far, side effects aren't a concern. <laughs> Whatever. If I'm still around in 20 years, I'll be thrilled. <laughs> what is an issue? Price. Pens cost about $1,000 to $1,300 a month out of pocket, and if used correctly, should be taken indefinitely. As of 2023, Medicare does not cover Wegovy, and only some plans fully cover Ozempic and Manjaro for diabetics, putting another barrier between U.S. users and the drugs. We have a situation where uh, there's a very, very steep demand, and uh, we cannot meet that demand. And I can only think about what it would mean if we start giving it away, so we cannot do that. But that too could change as society's understanding of obesity evolves. The American Medical Association officially recognized obesity as a disease in 2013. American Medical Association is changing this concept of BMI. They said that insurances cannot deny weight loss medication based purely on the BMI. Now that is huge and that's gonna open the door for many other patients to have access to this drug. The big question is whether the American insurance system can support coverage for millions of people needing these treatments in the future. These two drugs are gonna have multiple benefits for patients in a variety of health areas. So if that's the case, I think we have to consider can insurance afford all of this? And if they can't, what do they do about it? Analysts predict that competition among pharmaceutical companies along with availability will eventually drive prices down. The obesity treatments will be available ultimately, you know, certainly a decade or more from now for pennies on the dollar. And so treating obesity may become dramatically easier. To get there, Novo Nordisk will first have to tackle quality control. On September 21st, 2023, Reuters reported the FDA had found manufacturing shortfalls in the company's North Carolina production plant in July that could date back to May. Stocks fell by 3%. In a statement to CNBC, Novo Nordisk said the FDA does hundreds of routine inspections with all pharmaceutical companies every year. Novo Nordisk has responded to the FDA observations, and the facility continues to run and produce for the market. Even if Novo Nordisk and its peers can achieve the lofty goal of helping those suffering from obesity, there are some apprehensions. If Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk can continue to deliver and meet the demand, then it could really change the world. There is a, another risk. It could be something completely different than just a drug, but something you could use uh, as you use makeup. Maybe people simply would forget to do exercise and to, to eat healthy because we simply take a drug, only scratching the surface. And that's a little bit scary, in fact. Still, according to the company's leader, the attempt is worth the risk. I think nowadays we... Mankind is not struggling because of infections, but I think we're struggling because of, of how we live. And uh, with aging populations, we see less and less productive uh, workers living with more and more chronic uh, diseases like uh, cardiometabolic diseases. And if we can address that in, uh, in safe, efficacious ways, I think that's good for all of us. I think medical history will look back at semaglutide as, as one of the major breakthroughs, uh, a molecule that kept, kept giving, so to say. 